Hey everybody, Eric here from the MMG. Welcome to our server. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Keep supporting us. Today we're going to show you how to set up a brand new dedicated server for Star Rupture. This game is fantastic. If you love games like Satisfactory, this game offers more survival, exploration elements, and also all the great factory building. And so you're going to really, really appreciate this game. And right now you can get it for 20% off $15.99. It's a steal, trust me. All right, let's get into this. First thing I want to mention is they have some great instructions out. I love Creepy Jar. They seem to be a fantastic company. They have instructions out on how to do this. And the first method that they have is doing it through Steam. You can do a dedicated server as a tool. Follow these instructions. It's very easy to do. This is probably what a lot of you are going to want to do. Now, you know me. I love to do Steam CMD servers. So this is a dedicated uh, server that you don't have to have Steam running um, on the machine to do. And that's how I'm going to actually show you what to do today. But I'm going to have a link for these instructions in the video description. So if the Steam CMD, if my video doesn't quite help you, you but also this section also has the Steam CMD instructions. So this is going to be a link for everybody. And again, you need to know how to forward ports. If you can't do that, nobody externally is going to be able to join your server. So, all right, let me turn off this stupid camera and let's get down to starting and creating our own server. All right, we're going to start with the very beginning. If you do not have Steam CMD, you're going to have to download it. If you do have it, you can skip this step right here, but just Google Steam CMD like I've done right here. Hit enter. It's going to be this top link, Valve Developer Community. Click on that. And then you're going to see a download Steam CMD option there. There's a Windows and a Linux client. We're on Windows. I'm going to show you how to do the Windows client. So click on Windows. And then at the very top, there's a link here. And it says download Steam CMD for Windows. Click on that. It's going to download it wherever your downloads go in your browser. And it's going to be a Steam CMD.zip. As you can see there, if you've seen that flash up, I have now downloaded this 16 times doing these videos. But anyways, um, once you have that downloaded as a zip, you want to extract it. And you want to put it somewhere where you can remember where it's at. I always recommend somewhere, like if you have a D drive, that's perfect. Um, if you don't, you just have a C drive, maybe make its own folder on the C drive. Maybe call it Steam CMD. That's what I like to do. And then you just need to go into it and open it. And so mine, I have a shortcut here on my desktop. And then it opens right here is my Steam CMD. And then when you extract it, you should only have this file here if it's brand new. If you've done this before, you'll have lots of files here. That's normal. But you just want to double click on it and run it. And it's going to take some time and download and start to fill up your folder if it's the first time. Or it's going to update it if it's been a while since you've done this. But what you're looking for is you want it to come to a prompt like this that says Steam. And you, we're going to log in. You just type in login space anonymous, A-N-O-N-Y-M-O-U-S. Just like that. And then hit enter. Some games require you to log in with your Steam account. Those games make this a lot harder. And luckily, Creepy Jar has been did it the right way, and you can just log in anonymous to do this, so you don't have to. Now, the games that require you to log in require you to own the game. So you have to log into a Steam account that actually owns the game to do this on some games. But this Star Rupture is not that way, thankfully. Uh, once you get logged in here with this prompt, we're going to type in app underscore update, and then a space. And then you're going to punch in the code, and this is found on that website link if you don't have it handy or you hopefully you wrote it down uh, and the code is to download the correct files so the server files are what you want to download onto your server every server has their own code and so you have to find that now this particular code is three eight zero whoops i'm not typing in my browser sorry three eight zero nine four zero zero and then you hit enter now the instructions on their website, show you how to make a dot bat, which will automatically do all this logging in for you. Definitely do that. It's not hard. In fact, you know what? I'm going to show you how to do that. This is the way to manually do it. If you need to update your server, you can do it this way. And you do what I just did there, and it will update to the new files. So right now, I'm downloading all the files for the first time. And um, it may take a little bit of time, depending on your internet and speed connection. So while that's doing that, we're going to copy from the website. So it, hopefully, oh, I shut my website down. Hold on. Let me find it again. So let's go to Creepy Jar's website again, and we're going to scroll down to the Steam CMD. And right here, they have the command that you need. And this is saying that you have Steam CMD installed in this folder right here in your C drive. So this is where you can run into problems because if you did not put it in your, uh, if you didn't create a folder in your Steam drive called Steam CMD, then this this is not going to work for you. So, um, but anyways, let, let me show you how to do this. So we're going to copy this this code right here. So we can use most of it. So what I want to do is I want to right click wherever I put my Steam CMD.exe folder, right? I want to right click inside of it and go new. And then we're going to hit new text file. 
Okay, and then you want to name it. So I would name it like star rupture updater. Okay, dot text right now. Um, if, if now I, I really want this to be a dot bat, a dot bat, a dot bat. I cannot talk today. So I'm gonna I'm gonna change the name real quick. Make it a dot bat. Just go ahead and go for it. B A T. And it'll ask me if I want to do this change. Hit yes. Now if you can't do this, if it says dot bat dot text, um, you need to come up to view and put a check mark here where it says file name extensions. And then you can change the extension here in the name like I just did. Okay, now we wanna edit this. So we're gonna right click on it and go edit. If you have Notepad++, always recommend it, it's free. You can use regular Notepad too, either one. And we're gonna paste that command that I pulled from their website here. Now, if you are in a different location than this C drive right here, or if you're putting this into your folder like I just did, this is going to be way easier because you can just delete all this out. You can delete all this C drive, Steam CMD. This is a folder because we really just wanted to execute Steam CMD.exe. So by putting it in the folder with this file, you don't have to know the directory. Next, you want to delete all that force install directory listing. Get, get rid of all that to the plus login part. So your dot bat should look like this login anonymous plus the app and the app number and then the validate and quit. Now, if you're going to use this to update, when you do the validation portion, it's going to actually overwrite your dot bat. And we're going to make changes to that next. So you may take that out. I or you could just manually do it like I first showed you to update your server. That would probably be the best way. And don't forget to save the file once you have the changes made. All right, now that that's done, let's actually start the server. And so you want to go back to your Steam CMD folder, go to Steam Apps, go to Common, go to Star Rupture Dedicated Server. And here is your actual server files. You're going to have one here called SR server with log.bat. That's what we are going to edit. That's the, how you, you will start the server. So if you right click on it and go edit with Notepad++, you're going to see this is very, very basic. This is just basically going to start the server for you. That's it. And they have notes in their little wiki page or whatever you want to call it about what to do. But what you want to add is a multi-home and a port to the end of it. So the multi-home, not everybody needs this. Some people will need it. Some people will need to use their internal IP address like I'm using here. This is the internal IP address of your server. So your server's internal IP address would go there. Some people are gonna need to use their external IP address here. I don't know why everything functions differently. I'm sure there's a reason, but if one doesn't work, try the other. So mine is my internal server address and then the port is, is there too. Some people won't need multi-home at all, although they'll need support, but this works for me. And this will hopefully work for you. So not this IP address. You got to find your own internal server IP address. Just log into the server, open a command window, type in ipconfig slash all. And that will tell you what your internal address is if you don't know it. And uh, there's a link on the, the wiki page from CreepyJar about how to find your external address. And that is found through um, a web website. A bunch of websites will do it, but um, you can do it through the one on there. I think it was find my IP is the address that they use. All right, so once you have this set up like this, hit File, Save. We're going to close. Now, we're just going to execute this, okay? So we're just going to double click on it to run it. It's going to pop up the window. It's going to take a little bit of time to get everything spun up. Just let it go. I don't know, give it a minute. Go use the bathroom, get a drink, whatever you need to do. Eventually, it'll stop scrolling, hopefully. If it keeps scrolling, you got some kind of an error. It's in a loop. So then, then it can be a little bit of a problem. you got to find what the, what the error is. Um, hopefully you can see it scrolling by, though it's kind of hard. Um, but yeah, anyways, not a lot of fun there. But hopefully you'll get stopped at a screen about like this. This is where you want to be. Now, you want to leave this running. Your server's technically up, but it's not really visible for other people yet. You need to log in and get it set up first. And so you need to open, go to your computer that you're going to actually play the game on, okay? And you need to open your Star Rupture. All right, once you have Star Rupture open, you want to go down here and click on Manage Server. And then this is going to be the IP address. Again, could be your internal IP address, could be your external IP address. Try them both. One of them will hopefully work. For me, I had to put in my external IP address. Then hit connect. And if it pops up this asking you to enter a password, that is what you want. That is good. This is setting up your admin password for the server. It's got to be, I think, at least six characters, maybe more. I'm not sure. But you got to set up the password. And then hit confirm. Now, this is where you can you can set a password up. If you hit change password here, you can set up a password for the server. So this is for other people to connect to the server, not your admin necessarily. 
Then you hit confirm. All right. Now you need to hit new game because you're creating a new game and you need to give it a session name. And then you need to hit start game. And you have to be patient. I know it looks like nothing's happening. It's trying to load the server. Session is running. There we go. It worked. That's what we wanted to see. Now, now that it's running, you should be able to join it. So if you hit join game and click on dedicated server and then punch in your address, this is going to be your external. If you're on the internal network, it could be your internal. But if you're having uh, someone join from outside your network, they'll have to use your external IP address. And then the password for the server. Hit confirm. And boom, we're in our server. I have read where some people who are having issues here have stopped their server. Let me show you how to do that real quick. Once it loads in, just to show you guys, there's a screen to pick your character. It's what we want. Now, if you are having issues, and I'm going to also show you how to shut down your server the right way. When you back out here at your server screen, like you're seeing here, you click on the browser or the window, right? So click on the top of the, the window and hit Control C. Sometimes you got to hit it twice, but that will force a shutdown. That's how you can shut down your server. And then you basically run the stop bat again to start it back up. And some people have said that have fixed their issues. So if you're having issues not connecting to your server, try that a couple of times to see if that fixes it for you. All right, that wraps it up. You should be able to run your own Star Rupture server just like we did. Thanks for hanging out. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hype up this video. Let's get some traction on this bad boy and have yourself a great day.